and it looks like we are live. Um, ooh, we got an issue with Twitter here. Maybe might not be able to get our Twitter followers in here. It's not wanting to go. Maybe we can get that coming here in just a few minutes. Give me a second, guys. I got to I got to grab our uh, super fan group on Facebook as well, um, so we can get everybody in here and and enjoy a, a great show. Um, one that's going to be kind of somber to tell you the truth. Uh, Mile high, hello everybody. As we finally have everybody in here, um, welcome into an episode of the Dove Valley Deep Divers Podcast. I'm your host Lance Sanderson, and joining me as per usual is my good friend and colleague. Uh, he is Mile High Huddle senior NFL draft analyst and full-time staff art, uh, article cr- content creator for MileHighHuddle.com. Uh, the one and only Eric Trickle. Now, folks, um, before we get into it, obviously, um, Broncos country and really the world has been kind of um, shocked and got blasted in the face by the news last night. And in, in case you've been under a rock or haven't been able to, to follow the news cycle here lately, uh, Broncos legend, um, arguably the best wide receiver in franchise history. Demarius Thomas passed away last night. Um, There's multiple reports saying so. Um, There's a lot of different stories. Not exactly sure the cause of death on that. We won't get into that situation or anything like that. Um, Very, very somber, somber day, somber past 24 hours in Broncos country. And Eric, I know, um, I know for me, Demarius Thomas is one of my top five Broncos players of all time. Um, I know he means a lot to you as well. Uh, before we get into everything, I, w- I just want your your thoughts. What's your uh, instantaneous reaction? Uh, I mean, obviously, sadness is the biggest thing, but what's your instantaneous reaction to hearing the news of Demarius Thomas passing? Well, I mean, it it, it was rough. I had, so DT he meant a lot to a lot of people who didn't never even got a chance to meet him, like myself, and uh, and. There, there were things that happened in my childhood that were quite similar to his and seeing him be able to smile. And I saw somebody put it on Twitter that every day he woke up and he chose kindness with when you know what happened to him growing up, that it was would have been so easy for him to go the other way. And it watching him and be what he became hit home, hit home with me. And, um, and happening now, I mean, he was just about to turn 34 on Christmas Day. And it's, as somebody who meant a lot to me in my life, I mean, he was a guy who, he he was one of the players that really pushed me and ignited that desire and that love I have of scouting the draft. Yeah. And uh, getting me deep diving into it and everything and leading to where I am today. And it was hard because a couple years ago on Christmas day, I lost my grandma and it was just a thing of losing somebody you care about so close to the holidays is hard. And so I immediately started thinking about his family and what they're going through. And it's, it's just a hard moment. It's a hard moment for thousands of people across the country because again, DT just meant so much to so many people. Yeah. The, the biggest thing in uh, Brian jumping in here with a, with a, a generous super chat. And uh, it was in 2011 was the first year of my life. I saw our Broncos make the playoffs uh, during that first play of overtime. I had tears in my eyes and I have tears in my eyes now. Uh, rest in peace to Mary's Thomas. Uh, thank you for everything. And guys, uh, I want to just throw this up here really fast, Scott. Um, Tonight, uh, this is a show about remembrance. It's a show about celebrating the life of, you know, one of the Broncos' top probably 10 best players in franchise history. Um, And we want your guys' input as much as possible. Um, We want as many stories as you guys possibly can. Um, Any memories you have, talking your your most favorite plays about Demarius Thomas, uh, anything that you want to include into the show, please, guys, um, Scott's behind the scenes. He's going to be scouring the comment section. Use hashtag RIP88, please, at the top of your comments. Um, we will get to as many of those comments as we can. Um, super chat, stars, doesn't matter, guys. We just, we want you guys to be engaged in this. We're here all together. Uh, football brings people together in special ways. And, you know, this is this is our way of, you know, um, getting together and, and – remembering everything that goes on with, with the Mary's Thomas, giving you guys a, a break from reality for a little bit. I mean, I know it's kind of a somber way of going about this, but we want your guys' memories just as much as we're going to give you ours. And we've got a handful of those, but guys, before we get into that, I have to do this. I don't want to, I have to, um, today, today's show is sponsored by, uh, by my bookie. 
Guys, uh, cryptocurrency is the future, so don't get left in the past. Uh, bet with my bookie, and you can get into the game now. Uh, to get you cr- uh, kickstarted with crypto, use the promo code uh, MHH to double your first crypto deposit at my bookie. The best part is my bookie accepts well-known cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, so you can bet and withdraw with all of your crypto. Yeah, and the NFL playoffs, I mean, they're just right around the corner. The Broncos are trying to make their push for it, as are multiple other teams. And this week, we could have a potential Super Bowl preview with the Buffalo Bills taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Both teams are sitting sitting one spot away, or one one away from earning the top spot in their respective conferences. But in this high-stakes game, I think I would take the Bucks on the money line. Don't miss out. Double your first deposit up to a thousand thousand dollars by using promo code MHH. Head to my bookie today, place your bets, and watch sparks fly with UFC 269. Yeah, guys, bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Again, guys, uh, promo code MHH, double that crypto deposit if you guys get the opportunity to do so. Um, David Wilder jumping in here. Uh, such a sad evening for Broncos country. Rest in peace to DT88. And yes, absolutely. Um, Man, I, I I hate doing this. I, Sebastian throwing some stars, nothing to say, just just showing some love. We appreciate you there, Sebastian, as well. Um, yeah, guys, again, hashtag RIP88. Get, get yourselves into the conversation now, Eric. Uh, a big part of remembering the the and celebrating the life and the career of Demarius Thomas goes to, I mean, your top favorite moments. I've got five of them here that I wrote down and kind of did a little homework on everything. Um, and I, I'm going to start it off with one that's not necessarily the, the happiest thing in the world. Uh, Bronco fan, I'll get to you in a second. Uh, it's not necessarily the happiest thing in the world. We have uh, Super Bowl 48. And I know, obviously, the Broncos got blown out 43-8 to eight by the uh, Seattle Seahawks in that game. But Demarius Thomas was probably the only Broncos player that actually showed up to play in that football game. Uh, he actually set the Super Bowl record with 13 receptions after getting blasted by Cam Chancellor in the, in the first quarter on their second drive. Um DT had 30, uh, 13 catches for 118 yards in the Broncos' lone score of the game. And like I said, his effort that night, even despite being blown out of the water by the Seahawks from the opening snap, literally, uh, he, that's something that you could always guarantee with Demarius Thomas was the fact that he was going to give 100% effort. Um, so, yeah, uh, Eric, what do you think about the Super Bowl 48? I mean, you're right. I mean, it was He was one of the few Broncos who stepped in and – didn't give up. I mean, he kept playing from start to finish, giving it his giving it his all, trying to provide some kind of spark to help the team come back, but it just wasn't in the cards. Fortunately, Denver was able to go and get a Super Bowl with him just a few years later, which was great to see. One of my favorite moments for him was just one play that a lot of people just kind of always shrug off a little bit, and it was a game against the Kansas City Chiefs. I can't remember all the details for it, but it was just this amazing catch he had in the back of the end zone. Like watching it live, he just went, he got up so high to get it at the highest point, brought it down, kept his feet in bounds, scored the touchdown. I believe the Broncos went on, went on to win that game pretty easily, but that play, it just showed like just how great of a player he actually was. And we always hear about the drops that he had, the drops that he had, but he made some huge catches when it really mattered. And that was one of them. And that play just lives on in my memory and always will. I mean, it was just one of those plays that my jaw hit the floor. Like, I was just amazed that he was able to go up and get that. Not many receivers in history have been able to. I'd say probably on a list, maybe 10 others throughout all of the NFL history. And I doubt we'll see many more happen over that, be able to do that over the next however long. Yeah. Uh, Bernard uh, Diocampo jumping in here with the, with the hashtag RIP 88. Uh, his favorite memory of Demarius Thomas was the record uh, touchdown catch from Peyton Manning. I actually have that play and another play with, uh, with Peyton Manning. Um, this was October 19th of 2014. I don't remember what week it was. It was like week six or something like that. Uh, he, ca- he catches Peyton Manning's 509th touchdown pass, setting the NFL record for the most passing touchdowns in a, uh, in a, a career for, for Peyton Manning. And it also started off a game of monkey in the middle with, uh, with uh, Julius Thomas and, uh, I think it was Wes Welker at the time that was there, so 2014, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, also, uh, I think Emmanuel Sanders was in that. That was that was great, you know. And and Peyton was just so mad, but DT was out there smiling and and doing the things that you know that he always did, and uh, just being a leader in a way that 
you know, nobody really thinks about, you know, the, the quiet guy that just goes to work and busts his ass and works, works as hard as anybody else. And, you know, um, that to me is, is a huge memory to me. Yeah. And this is one, a memory of his that is, I mean, it's not a favorite play or anything. It was just anytime he got up and spoke to the press. Yeah. Always win or loss, always had a huge smile on his face. Uh, he just didn't let anything bring him down. He was always very positive and optimistic and seeing all these players that are coming out and talking about it now and how refreshing that was, how he always tried to see the bright side and always try to keep people, people's spirits high. And it's just hearing that about him. He was just, he's one of those guys that you just wanted to be around. And everybody talks about the poll that Peyton Manning had, and there's no doubt that he did, but I think there got to be a point where to, where DT was pulling in people as well, yeah. just because of his attitude. I mean, Julian Edelman only put, was with him for a couple of weeks, and he's so positive. And it, players, your, their kids, like he just was so cheerful, so nice, so kind to anyone and everyone. He did so much for the city of Denver, for people all all over the place. And I mean, I know we're talking about on the field, but off the field too, I, the memories of what he did are some of my favorite things. Cause so many players, once they make it to the big leagues, like some of them still, I mean, we still hear all about all the ones to do, but there are a lot of players that's just kind of shrugs off everybody else. They get this ego about him, and he, you would never be able to guess that he, there was an ego or that he was a football player or anything like that, just because he didn't act that way off the field. Yeah. There was a great, uh, great series of tweets, a, a couple of videos that uh, um, Nikki Jabbala was formerly with the, uh, the I, I believe it was the Denver Post is where she was at. Um, but she tweeted out a bunch of videos about DT playing with a bunch of kids at a boys and girls club or a football camp or something like that, where um, he's playing, you know, hopscotch with them and rock, paper, scissors and everything. It's great. Go check that out. Um, can I get that one from Travis back, Scott, please? really fast. Uh, he, he jumps in. So I know Demarius Thomas and Calvin Johnson both attended Georgia Tech. Uh, since Calvin was deemed as Megatron, it was only fitting that DT was known as Optimus Prime. Uh, love you, DT. Thank you. Uh, fly fly high, mile high salute. Uh, my favorite is the wild card game against Pittsburgh. And that's the, I mean, that's the the golden standard right there, man. I mean, Tim Tebow to, to DT ball game, man. Uh, I, I want to pull the the Dave Logan audio from that. I wanted to play that for everybody live before we got started today, but uh, yeah, that's the, um, that's the, 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 one of the biggest plays in Broncos history, like quite honestly, top five, at least uh, to the walk-off touchdown to, to kill the Steelers who were going to come in with the number one passing defense in the NFL. And it's Tim Tebow who hasn't thrown the ball at all. And DT had a huge game. Tebow threw for over 300 yards, a long touchdown to end it. I mean, it's just great. David jumping in here. Uh, DT was a great player, but an even more wonderful person. Uh, hashtag RIP ADA. And yes, and I, I listened to the radio a lot, 104.3 to fan today. Um, I listened to 850KOA today as well and listened to a bunch of the, the anecdotal um, stories and stuff like that, the people bringing in. And not very many of them were, you know, stories about him on the field, obviously, you know, you've got the, um, the, all the, the big plays that he was able to create on himself is one of the most talented wide receivers I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, in fact, he was actually the very first player that I ever like truly scouted and wrote a scouting report on. It was Demarius Thomas. So got a really special place in my heart. And like that, without that, you know, without his impact there, I wouldn't be where I'm sitting right now. You guys wouldn't be listening to me talking. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing because it, I owe my whole career as a, a sports broadcaster and a, and a content creator to Demarius Thomas. Like this guy is literally the guy for me. Um, it hurts. And going back to talk about that Pittsburgh game real quick is you have to wonder if that play didn't happen, if the Broncos lost that game, does Peyton Manning still come? Man, it's... There, there, there's been a lot of rumored reports going about that them winning that playoff game was part of was a big reason why Manning ended up choosing them. And if that doesn't happen, like can't say for sure. Obviously, not trying to rewrite history here, but that play it sent a message that this is a great team. There was so much talent here. Quarterback needed to be figured out. It was the right time. Like just so much about that play. I remember I was so mad 
And when that play happened, I wasn't even watching the game. Like I was done. I was so angry about what was going on um, at that point. And I'm sitting in my room, extremely mad. I had broken a tin can, a tin container that had poker chips in it. I was just angry about a game. And I hear my mom start yelling. And at first I thought it was angry. So I'm like, oh, whatever. And then I hear her you can tell that it's cheering. And I came running out of my room. I fell. I actually cut my cheek because I landed on something just to watch the final few seconds of it and immediately watching the replay of it over and over. Like that play, it, I mean, I already talked about how watching him at, at Georgia Tech, which by the way, back in 2010 was extremely hard to find tape of that. It was. And at the time, like, I ended up having to go and uh, record a couple games and watching that. And uh, I, but I remember just it it continued to light this fire that I had to, as you said, it helped you get to here where you are as a content creator. Well, I mean, same thing here. Yeah, it, I I remember you know uh, Brian jumping in here really fast. I'm gonna get back to that. Uh, Brian jumping in here that record setting day against Arizona in 2014, and that was actually another one of mine. Uh, he was always a threat to take it to the house and was able to make the tough catches. Um, that was. Probably one of the greatest games from a wide receiver I've ever seen. Um, he actually had uh, a 77-yard touchdown called back in that game as well on a, uh, a – quite honestly, it was a dirty play by Julius Thomas cutting down Clayus Campbell the way he did. But uh, in that in that game, he set the single-game record for receiving yards on uh, eight catches for 226 yards and two touchdowns against Arizona 2014, uh, October 7th. So shortly before – it was actually two weeks before um, – he caught the uh, record-breaking touchdown pass for Peyton Manning, um, but yeah, like to, to get back to DT and what he what he was like, I was just always so mesmerized by a guy his size, you know. And going back to you know Georgia Tech days, um, Calvin Johnson was you know six four two thirty, DT was six three two twenty five. Like they both had ridiculous athleticism. They were like prototypical, like this, but you know Megatron versus Optimus Prime. Like they really were that kind of comp. Uh, conversation um and i remember i was at the time i was a senior in high school trying to scout him for the first time i was trying to get into scouting for the first time it was a, a commenter on the espn message boards and i had found a, a highlight reel of dt when he was at georgia tech and i was watching that i'm like this guy's gonna be legit you guys don't understand what we're necessarily watching and if you remember at the time like the, uh, des bryant was the number one wide receiver widely considered in the the NFL draft that year. Um, but I was constantly pounding the table. I want Demarius Thomas. I want Demarius Thomas. This guy is going to be legit. This was in January. He broke his foot training for the combine. Couldn't go to that. Everyone's like, he's not going to be a first round pick. You don't know what you're talking about. I was like, no, he's going to be a first round pick. He's going to be better than, than Des Bryant ever thought of being. And I got called all kinds of crazy names and stuff like that. Like saying, you need to just delete your account. You don't know what you're talking about. And, Look at where we're at. Like DT is arguably the biggest draft hit I've ever had in my life. Um, and again, because of him, I'm, I'm where I'm at now. Travis Weber jumping in here. Uh, DT was humble and thankful coming uh, up from his upbringing. Uh, Tim Tebow said it the best with his interview with Stephen A. Smith earlier today. Uh, he was remembered more uh, as the person he was, not the football player. He always made everyone happy with his smile and his humanity. His story is just um incredibly wild there's a great article that he wrote for the uh, players tribune uh, a few seasons ago highlighting the details of that uh um it's it's amazing to see how a guy with that kind of upbringing literally rose from the ashes turned into a beautiful phoenix and became one of the best players in franchise history yeah definitely and i think that and going back to moments or plays that were the the best games of his career or the best moments of his career. There's one that stands out. I'm trying to remember exactly what game it was. So just give me a quick second real quick. Um, let's see here. It was, I believe after the super, the year they won the Super Bowl, I believe it was the game, the Pittsburgh Steelers game, the playoff game against the Steelers in 26, well, the 2015, 2016 season, mm -hmm. because that was the first time his mom got to see him in person. Yeah. And yeah. He just he had a quiet day. <laughs> like the the it was a huge moment for him and his mom got to see him play. Super emotional, and he only had like 
he didn't have 50 yards. I remember that. But Denver won. And he I remember after one of the passes, I think it was the first pass he caught, he immediately went to go find his mom and give her the ball. And watching that, I mean, through everything, he loved his mom. He stuck by her. He and just I'm I'm a big old mama's boy and myself. And oh yeah. That I mean it made, it made me cry. So that's a moment that definitely stands out for me. Yeah. It, he did have a quiet day. It was like three three catches for like 27 yards or something like that. All he wanted was his mom's love. And that's absolutely right. The the article that he wrote in the Players' Tribune has a very specific notion about that, saying something to the effect of, is because we're athletes, we're never, you know, supposed to talk about being loved. You know, we're, we, uh, we all talk about brotherhood, but the biggest thing that you could ever have in a child's life is to show them that you love them. Uh, and he always tried to, too, from the, the stories that I was um, – being told today on the radio from guys like Tyler Columbus, Brandon Stokely, um, Joel Dreesen as well. They, they all came on and we're, we're talking about the way that he would walk into the room. And if there was kids there, that was the only people that he wanted to talk to. He was always about kids and making sure that he was going to be a, a positive influence in their life because of his upbringing. And it was easy for him, you know, at 11 years old, the, the Georgia police came pounding, pounding down his door. They raided his house. They arrested his mom and his grandma he woke up the next morning and still went to school, um, instantly became the man of the house, had to raise three or four brothers and sisters. Um, he woke up early every single day to go pick beans and peas and corn um, to try to make some extra money so that he could help feed his brothers and sisters. Uh, the guy came from the literal worst upbringing you could ever think of and then fought hard enough to not only become a great football player, a great athlete, but he became a better person. And he fought hard to get his mom out of prison, um, his mom and his grandma out of prison. Uh, President Obama commuted both of their sentences right before uh, he left office. Um, and a, a lot of that was because of Demarius Thomas it being the guy that he is and fighting for them and fighting to get them um, out of the situation that they were in. Uh, Joe Spaeth jumping in here. One of my favorite DT moments, the, the Broncos Ravens grudge mat in 2013 in the regular season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Season opener, <laughs> Peyton Manning threw seven touchdowns. Uh, five minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Broncos up 42 to 28 and DT housed another 78 yard bubble screen. That was the TD number seven for Peyton, uh, Peyton freaking Manning that day. Uh, such a great start to that season. The guy was an amazing Bronco and an absolute legend. Yeah. Um, I, I knew it was against the Ravens too. There was one that I specifically grabbed that I wanted to, and this was, this was the birth of that play. Uh, it was week one, actually a year earlier, um, September 11th, 2012, uh, the smoke screen play, the, 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 the DT play, everyone calls it the DT play. We need to get the DT play back in. And uh, that, that quick hitter, the quick screen, quick bubble screen. Um, the, the very first time we saw it, it was actually effective was against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was in fact the uh, second long touchdown that DT had against Pittsburgh in less than a calendar year. And it was also Peyton Manning's 400, 400th touchdown pass to, so that's the other one that I was talking about as far as him being in history books with Peyton Manning. Um, he, I, how many times did he take that smoke screen play to the house, Eric? It had to have been 10 at least. Yeah, there, there were so many of them. And I mean, the coming out with that play, like my next play was not just that one, but all the bubble screens that he just yep. managed in the house. And he was great at bubble screens. He was great at making people miss. He was had enough power to break through tackles. Like just one of the reasons why he was just so much fun to watch as a player and growing as an analyst with him like as and watching his play like it was just so much fun and just adds even more sadness to this tragic loss yeah venom seeker this is a great story guys uh he says that the tv by accident came on uh, tebow had just thrown the ball to dt and he ran down the sidelines in the, the wild card game on that day even though i didn't know it at the time i became a broncos fan and it was all thanks to Demarius Thomas. Um, and that hits. That hits hard. D he touched so many people. Shandy Bracey jumping in here uh, with the uh, rest in peace 88. Uh, just so many historical catches and moments. His highlights are some of the best a Broncos player has produced at wide receiver. Just wow. Um, is the age of my wife. Uh, 33 years old, folks. He turned 34 on Christmas. A um, couple years older than me. 
Uh, not to make it about myself, my ber- my 31st birthday is on Sunday, by the way. So don't forget that. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's you, you think about the Broncos of the last decade and DT is obviously at the forefront of that standing right next to Peyton Manning. Um, he had one of the, the best five game stretches in or five year stretches in NFL history. I mean, you put it up there against T.O., Randy Moss, Marvin Harrison, uh, uh, Jerry Rice. Like we're, we're talking a five year stretch from 2012 to 2016 where he averaged. This is his average season. 98 catches per year, 1,374 yards and nine touchdowns a season. Like, it's incredible. His 2014 season, 111 catches, 1,609 yards and, and nine t- or 10 touchdowns. Just ridiculous production. And it, it, that's why there's so many people that say that he's the best wide receiver in franchise history. I mean, we all know Rod Smith is, is great and nothing to take away from my most favorite Broncos player of all time, Rod Smith. But DT had a, an extra gear and extra ability that we we haven't seen ever. Yeah, we were talking about this with um, Chad Jensen before we went live about it. Rod Smith made a career from being such a smart player. I mean, he wasn't the most athletically gifted guy. He was just smart, and he just understood things on a different level that helped him get open and just be reliable and make plays. DT was a special kind of athlete, and he was this explosive athlete that you were able to go and – take those bubble screens and have him be a legit threat. He could also take the top off a of defense. He could do catch those 50, 50 balls. Like it didn't matter. He could just do it all. And part of it is, as we were talking about with Chad as to why both Lance and I think that he's the best receiver in Broncos history does have to do with the fact that part of us, we grew up with that. I mean, I grew up, I was watching Rod Smith. I mean, growing up as well, but I didn't, he his last year was the year that I really started to fall in love with football, I think would be the way to put it, 2006. So when I actually loved the game is when I was watching um, DT. And then I became an analyst, which had, what, eight years ago, I think it was, I think it is now. I mean, most of that, that's Thomas's career, right? A good portion of his career right there. So there's that probably definitely some of that, but I do think that he is the best receiver in Broncos history. I think that he should be in the ring of fame and definitely I think hall of fame. And I know that will get a lot of flag from multiple people, but I mean, no, he's got no. the numbers he's got. He ha- has the plays. He has everything that you really need for it. it. The question is, is will they hold the longevity against him as they have for multiple other players? I, I don't disagree with you on that. And I want to jump back into that part of the conversation. I'm seeing a lot of comments here and blaze jumping in here. The Broncos should retire number 88. Uh, no one else should wear it. Uh, Denver Broncos for life. Love DT. Um, now I, I understand where you're coming from. That one might be, a, I, I, I get it. DT again is one of the best players in franchise history. Retiring numbers is meant for um, not to say it like this, but players that really transcended Broncos football, um dt was one of those players we're, we're talking top 20 players but if you start retiring every single jersey that's out there you wouldn't have enough jerseys to field the football team um uh, and I, I hate to say that but it's actually the truth um as far as dt and his franchise uh franchise career stats um franchise records and stuff like that uh, these are only broncos related go ahead eric sorry how, how many numbers is too much would like you got you want to put a cap on it how many 10 the broncos have three i know i think i think they could afford to retire 88 and i mean there's another number out there too that's unofficially retired that they need to make official there's four numbers that they need to retire that needs to be that actually needs to happen and 88 is probably the fourth one 27 30 and 84 need to be retired before dt and i'm sorry about that yeah i think 24 than 88 but well yeah 24 as well yeah yeah but true. Yeah, but the but thing is, is that they have three numbers retired for four different players because, you know, number 18, the whole situation there was getting Peyton Manning as well. And then some of these other teams, they've got 10 plus guys numbers retired. Right. You've got a hunt. You've got 99 numbers to choose from. And especially with them opening up what you can wear and worrying about how many once you hit 10, then start worrying about it. But no, nah, man, you're good. Uh, and Colin just, just answered 
uh, Colin, just to answer your question. Yes, there are, are uh, three numbers retired, 7, 44, and 18. Um, yeah. Obviously, John Elway, uh, 18 for um, for Trapuca, and obviously the, the the four or five years that Peyton Manning was in town. And then 44 for Floyd Little, who everyone is it, widely known as the franchise. Floyd Little was our, uh, one of the best Broncos players back in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, and if not for him going literally door to door, knocking on people's doors to try to sell season tickets, the Broncos wouldn't be in Denver. Like that's literally why Floyd Little has uh, as much clout in this organization as, as he does. Uh, may he rest in peace as well. Uh, Venom Seeker jumping back in here. By the way, I was only seven years old when that happened. I'm 17 now. It hurt way more because I grew up with him. Like me, he was shy and quiet. And we both broke out of our shells over time. And Venom, man, that's that's rough, dude. I, I, I Like I said, I turned 31 on Sunday. Um, I grew up watching Rod Smith, but I, I grew up in my football career you know, my, my analysis career, the the scouting career that I have uh, with DT and it did open up a bunch of different pathways. It opened up me out of a shell that I didn't necessarily know that I was in. Um, but yeah, it's, it, that's a great story, man. And get, get more guys, uh, hashtag RIP 88, uh, hashtag RIP 88, uh, get as many of these in as we can. We'll go back and read some that we didn't get a chance to, but uh, yeah. Um, God, I'm, I'm still almost at a loss for words about this whole deal. 33 years old, guys, 33 years old. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, as we keep talking about the lives he touched and everything like that, I think the, one of the best things I've seen today and have been seeing today that I've been constantly just refreshing Twitter for a look is all these players who played with them and their stories. And every single one of them deals with how he was with their kids. I, um, um, Jacob Tammy had a great video out there about his son, uh, Tyler Columbus. He had a great little story about his son who basically Thomas just kept with him after the Super Bowl, kept with him all the way back, rode with him on the parade, everything. And then the connection that he had with Peyton Manning's kids and so many others. Like he just there, there's a, a guy I know once said that um, if kids or dogs don't like you, then you're not a good person. And I mean, kids loved him. So, and everybody loved Thomas. I mean, he was just so kind and he was shy. He was quiet. And then he broke out of his shell. And once he broke out, we got to see how magnificent of a person he really was. Yeah. Uh, Zebulon jumping in here. He asks a, a question. I'm going to try to give him an answer here. Uh, what are the ring of fame requirements? I'm certain he meets them all except the, the waiting period, wh uh, whatever there may be. Uh, they should just honor him as soon as possible. Um, now, Eric, I'm not sure if you actually knew this. Um, the, the first off, Zeb, to answer Zeb's question, the, the, the Ring of Fame, um, there's it's a five-year waiting period after you retire. It's similar to the Hall of Fame. I believe it's a four-year. You have to be within the franchise of four years um, uh, to, to be eligible, which is why Peyton Manning was eligible to go into the Ring of Fame in Denver earlier this season. Uh, so DT does meet that. He just has to wait to hold out the waiting period. Um, I've saw a lot of comments earlier saying they need to honor him immediately. I don't disagree with that. They, they need to do that as, as quickly as possible. But uh, Eric, I'm not sure if you actually knew this. Um, when we were doing the mile high huddle meetup at the, at the Jets game, DT was supposed to be there. Um, and unfortunately his health issues made it so that he was not able to travel. Um, so they ended up canceling it. They were supposed to do, uh, it was right after, obviously he retired this last season, uh, retired as a Denver Bronco. And uh, they, uh, they, the, the Broncos were going to do a, a big tribute to him, big video tribute and stuff like that. I uh, imagine the, the one they're going to put up this Sunday against the Lions is going to be very similar to the one that they had for him um, back in week three. But uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I, I do believe that he is a ring of famer. I'm also with Eric, and we need to dive into this conversation just a little bit more. Um, I don't have the stats pulled up right now, but I do want to get into the Hall of Fame conversation. But Eric, ring of fame, obviously, this is this is an obvious one. He's He's got to go up as soon as possible. Yeah, and I mean, they have that requirement, five years. But you know what? The franchise can do whatever the heck they want. Yep, they Scott. can bend the rules. They can break the rules. Like... They can do whatever they want with their ring of fame. And I think that they should, I, mean, I think it should go up. Like they, I think they should make the exception for it. I don't know if you really would do it this week. Cause it would be such short notice to get everything else that you need to do, but 
their next home game, their last home game, whatever it should happen. It should happen sooner because of everything that was for, um, that he did for Broncos country and all this. I mean, he helped with, um, Cortland Sutton. He helped take him under his wing there for a while yep. and just so many players. And the thing is that talking about all these players and what they're saying is all these guys who didn't play much with him, like only played a couple of years, Justin Simmons, Garrett Bowles, um, cut few others and talking about one of the first things they, that players that they heard from consistently was Thomas. He was always quick to reach out to them to welcome them. Um, Orlando Franklin had a great story about it, about how he was, a, he was kind of shy coming in and everything like that and being quiet and reserved. And Thomas just kind of came up to him and acted like no big deal. And that speaks a lot for young guys coming into the locker room to rookies coming into the locker room. So it'll be, uh, it's, I mean, <laughs> not much more to say besides a tough loss and that he's going to be remembered by everyone for how kind of a person he was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's it's such like I said, guys. I'm I'm still kind of at a loss for words. I'm processing everything. Um, today there was a lot of dust around. I there my eyes got watery several different times. I'm sure someone was cutting onions as well. Um, listening to the stories of people, you know, um, the, the, of people just just sharing their memories and it, it doesn't even like i said none of them not not very many of them were about you know his uh his on the field accomplishments a lot of them were about the the things that he did off the field you know and again playing with kids all the time um the the lives he impacted in the locker room um the lives he impacted off the field there was a great story about this uh it was Mark Schlereth earlier this morning. I'll give him the credit for telling the story. Uh, his wife, Lisa, went into a Starbucks and uh, the the barista at the Starbucks was saying it was all super excited. Like, hey, you know who Demarius Thomas is? He, he just came in here. He, I have a jersey in my truck. I carry it around all the time in case I run into him. He signed my jersey. I'm so excited. And like, that's just one of the several different things that he had done over the course of his career, just trying to make – people's day better like that's that's something that we should all aspire to be and his loss is something that i will take with me forever like i again without him i wouldn't be where i'm at i I really wouldn't and it's it's okay to be sad and and karen jumping in it's okay to be sad and upset and even show it it's human and i i appreciate that karen thank you very much as i'm starting to get a little bit emotional here uh I, I hope that we can create more Demarius Thomases in this world because right now we're not necessarily in a great place and there needs to be some better human beings on this planet. And Eric, I'm going to let you take it away for a second. Um, real quick, I just want to grab Venom Seeker and says, dude, week three was my first live game. I went there for three main reasons. I always wanted to go to one, wanted to meet the MHH guys, which I did, and I knew he was going to be honored. I didn't know he was going to be honored. I was just there and I... Going when I got my plane ticket to go for the MHH meet and greet, I didn't know that Thomas was there. I wasn't expecting to go, but man, like I didn't even I, honestly, I didn't know he was supposed to be honored until Lance just said it. Um, and hearing that that he was supposed to and couldn't make it for health issues is such a bummer. But uh, real quick, I just want to ask because like we met a lot of people there that day. I was which just one, about to say the same thing. <laughs> which one? Which one were you that we met? I. Just so not I to, try to put, put, a, put a face to it, and yeah, not to not to uh, not to like throw your your don't throw first and last name. Give us give us a first name at least. Tell us your first name because like we met over a hundred people. Uh, Spencer jumping in here. I've been tearing up all day, man. Uh, this this crap hurts. Uh, sorry to have to edit that out, but uh, yeah, um, it's rough, guys. It's been a rough day for the Broncos. It's been uh, a rough day for a lot of people. Um, I, uh, I don't necessarily know what to say anymore. I've just been, I've been so hurt. I've been, uh, trying to fight through it. And I thank you guys for, for kind of going through this with me and allowing me to share some of my personal memories about Demarius Thomas. And I want to hear more of your guys's. So, uh, uh, Travis jumping in here. I was at work trying not to break down. Uh, the Broncos are more than just a team. I follow. They connect with me on a personal level with my dad. Um, 
yeah, it, and again, you know, DT, like I said, is the first player I ever scouted. It's there's a personal connection with me. I've never actually met him, and I I'm so sad that I never got the opportunity to meet Demarius Thomas in person because I would, I would probably tell him what he meant to me and to where I am uh, as far as a person now. Um, it's it's just it's a terrible day. Yeah, and uh, let me tell you what talk we uh i'd just gotten home last night and i opened up the group chat on facebook with lance carl nick james and myself and i saw them talking about it and i was like i didn't read fully so i'm talking about this rumor uh, dt i was like what are they talking about open twitter i saw it i immediately reached out and turning to the chat and telling them that it's true that the what i was told passing along that information was hard um i started shaking i tears i mean tears came to my eyes it was hard but and just it it was hard for multiple other reasons and some of it is in a way is selfish all of, most of you here know everything that was going on with my mom just a couple months ago, then everything with my grandma a few years ago, her passing away on Christmas. Like it all just came flooding back and just all the emotions of what he meant to me, then how his family's feeling. It, it, it was hard. And Broncos country definitely is, as a um, Karen shared here, the Denver Broncos are not only a state of mind, but a family of friends. And it's true. I mean, we all have, we may disagree on how to go about it, but we all have one desire and that's the Broncos to win. And in a way that connects all of us. And there were a lot of people that didn't care for Thomas, especially towards the end of his career with his play, but no one can deny the person he was. No one can deny the amount of hearts he touched and just how great of a person he was being. And now I don't think we're going to, maybe we will carry this on to a full hour or not. But uh, before we would get out of here, I just kind of want to talk about the upcoming Lions game a little bit and more so the emotions going into that game. And I hope anybody in the chat who's going to be there, I hope you guys wear 88 in some way, shape, or form, whether you have a jersey or even just one of those shirts that has it, just something for him. Write it on your damn hand. <laughs> Go go in with it painted on your face, it's just some way to honor him. And how how is this going to impact the team and their performance? The it, it's hard um, without going through the roster off the top of my head. Um, there's a handful of players that were with uh, that were with TD or with DT in in Denver. Um, notably Jerry Judy was there or uh, Cortland Sutton was there for a little while. Um, you've got, um, some defensive guys, Alexander Johnson, Justin Simmons was there for a little bit. Um, there's, uh, so I don't necessarily know that many of those guys are going to appreciate that. They will for sure. Everybody knows who Demarius Thomas was and they, they understand the whole situation with him being as great as he was. But, uh, to me, I think, I think it's going to come out to, a I think there's going to be some pretty inspired performances. Um, Garrett Bowles is going to be a guy that I, I you know how emotional he is. Um, he's he's a guy that wears his heart on his sleeve. He's not scared to mince words. Um, I'm looking for him to have a huge game, a really good game. Um, Cortland Sutton, uh, hopefully if we can get Teddy Bridgewater to actually target him, that would be fun. Uh, but I, he's going to have a big game because he learned most of his his high quality route running that he's got it came from DT and Emmanuel Sanders in his rookie season because again like like DT Cortland Sutton was incredibly raw as a route runner coming out of Southern Methodist University so um, for him that's this is going to be a, a you know a, a big game for him I'm hoping that it's a lot of supercharged fired up emotional performances i really am hoping that however it it is definitely something that you could watch out for we just we lost one of us you know the players the players have a, a certain society behind the scenes that people don't necessarily know about and dt reached out to so many people um not only in the community outside of the community um 
and uh, outside of the locker room. It, who knows who he maybe crossed path with in his in his time on this earth that might have impacted their life in a, in a positive way. And now they have, you know, this could be a letdown game, but the, it, it can. It definitely can. I hope that's not the case. I hope the Broncos go out there and beat the holy hell out of the Lions. But this up until last night, I was struggling with who to pick to win and my score prediction because yeah. the Lions coming off a win, I think they'd be a little bit fired up. But the Broncos at the same time, they're going to be coming off that loss to the Chiefs. I think that there's going to be a thing for it. Now I think they're going to go and send a message. And I think that they're going to play in honor of Thomas's memory, leave it all out on the field. And I don't think it's close. I think my prediction and all season long, guys, I've never gave my prediction. I always try to push you guys to go check out the article for it. But I think I had it 31 to nine with the Broncos just creaming the Lions. And part of it is, I mean, also is the Lions are dealing with so many players that are ill. <laughs> with yeah. the flu that's just gone through their their locker room they're missing some key players but the the emotions of it the emotions in that stadium like the players they're going to feel it from the fans the fans are going to feel it from the players and for lack of a better way to put it i think we're going to end up seeing magic on sunday during the game just going back to the score predictions and i, I hope we do see magic i i didn't actually give a score prediction this week um I wrote three sentences, um, and they, and I'll quote them to you right now. I have very little words for this game coming up on Sunday. It doesn't matter. Rest in peace, Demarius Thomas. That's all. Broncos win. That was my prediction for this game. Broncos win. Now, James Campbell, our good friend, um, also another member of, of the staff at milehighhuddle.com. Make sure you guys get at him on Twitter as well. Um, he, in our, in our, in our Slack channel for where we do all of our game predictions and stuff like that, he wrote out a long and thoughtful, uh, message, you know, it, again, guys go check it out at milehighhuddle.com. The round table piece is up and has been live since about two o'clock this afternoon. So please go check that out. Um, check out all of our, our staff predictions and everything. But, uh, James at the end of it has said, uh, this one's for, this one's for DT. And he he actually picked the Broncos to win eighty eight to nothing. <laughs> that put a smile on my face. It it really did. Um, eighty eight to nothing was just perfect. He actually gave a, a real score prediction. I won't spoil that. Go check that out at uh, milehighhuddle.com. But uh, uh, and, and guys, after this, uh, I'm I'm hoping if I can pull myself together, I, I'm hoping to do uh, the the top five moments that I had for for Demarius Thomas and ones that I that read off to you guys tonight. Um, I'm going to put that in a written article form. Hopefully that will be up tomorrow morning. Um, uh, so long as I can actually get it done tonight, but, uh, yeah. Uh, as, as far as the Lions game is concerned, after hearing the news last night, I, I never thought about it. I, I didn't know anything about the Lions and their 30 people on injured reserve, right. Or the, the, the injury list right now, all the flu that's going, I didn't care. It doesn't matter anymore. Like at least not this week to me, it, it doesn't matter there's there's bigger things at play than a football game right now there's always those moments throughout i mean even broncos history darren williams um McK K uh, what kenny mckinley right say so what there's there, kenny mckinley he was another i believe another receiver a few yeah. years back uh -huh. yep past um there, there's always these moments, either in our personal lives or in football lives. Sean Taylor, like going on Junior Say Out. There's all these moments that just are should be always remembered. That football is just football. It's just a game. Yeah. There's things bigger than it. Your family's bigger than it. And treating other people with kindness is big is bigger than it. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, Jordan jumping in here, uh, sh showing off the hashtag. Uh, Love Bay Bay. And that was his nickname. Uh, B E Y B E Y Bay Bay. Uh, DT. I'll always remember him for his bright smile and being a stand up guy and never a diva. This hurts. It does hurt. And that's something else that, you know, Eric, you kind of, you, um, you spoke about it earlier is uh, his, uh, his candor with the media. He was never scared and never shy to go up and answer all of your questions 
as candidly as possible. In fact, uh, I think Von Miller kind of took that, that away from DT. Honestly, I don't know. I'd have to ask Von if I ever get the opportunity to, what did you learn from Demarius Thomas and, and everything like that. But over the last you know year and a half or so, Von Miller in his press conference has got a lot more candid with his answers and not one word answers and stuff like that. DT would give three minute answers to a simple question about just a random, random happenstance. You ask him how he's doing today. He's going to live, literally give you the story of his life in three minutes. It's amazing candor. Um, the smile that lit up the room, um, everything about him, man. Uh, Zachler jumping in here. Uh, Rip 88, uh, Broncos versus Saints 2016 underrated one hander by T- DT was one of my favorite. Well, that's a great catch too. Oh man, it was such a good catch. Um, we could comb to... through his whole career and probably man. find a few hundred catches that were Dude. just great, amazing plays because that's a lot of what his career was. And it's just the, how about how about the how about the drop game. Let's let's talk about the drop game. You remember, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 2015, CJ Anderson walk off the walk off touchdown in the snow against the Patriots. He had like six drops in that game alone. It was it was terrible. It was the worst performance we've ever seen. But down the stretch, he made two catches, two huge catches, one down the right sideline that ended up forcing the. Uh, I think that was in overtime. He made that huge, gigantic catch that no one ever wants to talk about because two plays later, CJ Anderson's running 54 yards for the game, the game winning score. In this, like everyone remembers CJ Anderson, but they forget Brock Osweiler, who had a bad game as well, hit DT after he had five or six drops in that game for like 25 yards on a third down that extended the drive and put the Broncos in the position to score. Like it it was such a huge play that no one remembers. Yeah. And I mean, he had many of those. And one thing with him is talking about it is that drop game. He kept playing. He didn't let the drops take over. He didn't sit there and get down or anything. He just kept going. And going back to talking about how great of a person he was and not being a diva. I remember after he was traded, I can't, I'm not going to name the site. I'm not going to name who wrote it or anything. I remember somebody did a thing trying to paint him as some major diva. And that's why he was traded. And that angered me at the time. And just thinking about it now angers me because if there was anybody that was the farthest thing from a diva, it it was Thomas. Like it was whatever for the team. He didn't care. He wanted the team to win. He wanted the team to be successful and he would do whatever is needed. Games that he had four, like three catches for like 13 yards or however many yards or the 10 target, seven catch, 150 yard games. He didn't care as long as the team won. He wasn't one that was going to be, oh, throw me the ball no matter what. And trying to paint him out to be a diva after he was traded was just so frustrating. And remembering that somebody tried to uh, smear his name, I guess, is just frustrating. Um, Spencer coming in here with one of the reasons why I fell in love with DT. That man blocked his ass off also nonstop. He did. Uh, 6'3", 225, super strong. Um, Dude ran 4'3", 8", by the way. Like, if you guys don't understand, like 6'3", 225, and you run 4.38 seconds in a 40-yard dash, that's just ungodly height weight speed combination. But For it, comparison, that'd be like Lance running a six-second 40. Ooh, that's rough, dude. I ran 4'6 <laughs> in high school. Leave me alone. That was a long time ago, though. So six seconds is probably about right. But, uh, no, DT was um, arguably one of the best blocking wide receivers I think I've ever watched. Um, as far as a talent coming out of Georgia Tech, as far as in the NFL as well. Rod Smith was up there too. Uh, Ed McCaffrey, um, just to name some Bronco-specific guys. Uh, Heinz Ward is another guy you want to throw in there in that conversation. But uh, uh, th- he was never scared to make the play, make the play, not a play, make the, make the right play, do what was asked of him um, to, to help the team win. And he, if it wasn't him catching the football, like Eric said, it was him making a key block down the field, digging out a safety, uh, in a too high shell uh, on a backside zone stretch. Like it, that's, that's what he was. Uh, Marlon Shorty jumping in here, uh, feeling a mile high pain. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a pretty mile high pain. Um, big stars there as well. Thank you. Um, but guys, I, I think it got, let me let me do these matters of business, Scott. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I'll take the controls here, and thank you. I appreciate you, Scott, for for all your help tonight, um, guys. Make sure you guys follow us on on Twitter at Sanderson MHH for Eric at Eric Trickle. I want more of your stories. I know I know it's like 
cliche of me to say that, uh, like, I, but I want to know. Like, DT touched me in a way that um, that sounds weird, but DT was a, a big guiding force in my life, um, and I uh, I, I want to hear any of your your good stories, the the happy stories, the sad stories, um, anything you you have about. Uh, your memories of Demarius Thomas. And uh, I would really appreciate that. Hit me at Sanderson MHH for Scott at Scout Kennedy on, on Twitter as well. Uh, shout out to Scott for running the ones and twos behind the scenes. Um, guys, while you're at it, make sure you guys are uh, following at, uh, let's see here, at DVDD underscore pod. That's the Dove Valley Deep Divers podcast account um, where you're going to find what we're talking about every single week. Uh, also, guys, at Mile High Huddle, um, that's where you're going to get uh, instant news and analysis on your Denver Broncos. Um, Breaking news, film breakdowns, opinion articles, um, my my memorial piece for DT coming uh, later tonight or early tomorrow. You're going to find that there at Mile High Huddle. Uh, Facebook supporters, make sure you guys go to facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle. Click that blue McCubb of supporter button so you guys can get uh, premium content like the Trickle Zone, like Broncos Book Club and Kelberman's Corner. Um, and also, guys, if you're financially able to do so, uh, huddleuppod.com. Make sure you guys go get your merch. That's where you guys can get one of these state of being hoodies that I've got here at the Dove Alley Deep Divers hat that Eric's wearing right now. Um, something from every show, anything to suit your fancy uh, face mask, coffee cup, hoodie, doesn't matter. Some for the guys, some for the gals, the onesie for your baby, if that's something you're interested into. Um, huddleuppod.com. That's where you guys are going to get that. And folks, if you're not financially able to do so, we understand um, it, times are rough right now. It's, it, it, it's getting hard. But uh, everybody, uh, every single person on our following should be doing these three things. Subscribe wherever you guys are watching this, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, um, Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to Mile High Huddle. If you guys see a video on social media or an, or an article, uh, anything like that, like it at least, please. And if you love it, share it. Get it in front of as many Broncos fans as possible because that's the most organic way you can help us grow the, the Mile High Huddle community. And also, I mean, it means a lot to us because without your guys' support, we couldn't do what we do best, which is uh, cover your Denver Broncos and bring you the best Broncos content on uh, on the Internet. So uh, with that, guys, uh, Eric, um been kind of a rough show. Um, Scott, thank you for bearing with us as we remember um, Demarius Thomas. But guys, uh, any last words? Yeah, I saw this comment earlier and I meant to mention it for it. Somebody asked if, if they're going to do something to honor him. The players are and they're all going to have 88 on the back of their helmets. 88 decal. There's, there's, that's what they're going to be doing for him. Yeah, there's going to be a, a video tribute as well. And like I said earlier, it's probably going to be the same one that they had for him um, at the uh, – at the week three game where they were going to honor him and after his retirement. But uh, guys, I'm going to leave you with this. Um, make sure you guys go out and any friends that you have, um, any anybody that might be going through a rough time in their life, uh, anybody you haven't spoken to in a while, um, loved ones, make sure you call them and check in on them really fast. Uh, make sure you, you hug your wife, your kids, um, your significant other, it doesn't matter because life is fleeting. Um, this is something that we, we all deal with at certain times. Um, and, and I know that, uh, as, as far as a celebrity death is, you probably shouldn't take a, a big, uh, big issue like I am with this one, but, uh, it, it doesn't matter guys. Uh, life is fleeting. There are precious moments out there for everybody. Make sure you guys always remember that. Hug and, your loved ones and uh, and don't ever forget that. And there's a uh, line from a movie called Pollyanna, older movie, and uh, the preacher is standing up before and he just yells, death comes unexpectedly, and it definitely does. So as Lon said, make sure you reach out to your loved ones, your family, your friends, and let them know and just, uh, yeah, just make sure they know. Yeah. Now with that, guys, um, you all stay safe and take care. I love you all. I appreciate all of your guys' support. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. Root hard for the Broncos. Say a prayer for Demarius Thomas. You all stay safe and take care. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. And as always, go Broncos.